All right, welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're going to be taking a look at the SV06 ACE. The SV06 is basically an i3 MK4 clone. It's got kind of a different feature set. It's more open source, maybe a little bit less build quality. The main difference between the Soval SV06 ACE and its predecessor is that this one is running Clipper, so that should allow you higher print speeds and a lot of networking functionality. But before we get into too much detail, I should disclose that Soval has sponsored this video. So if you spot any bias in this video, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Let's start by looking at the basic features of this machine. So it's got an Ender 3 sized bed. This is, you know, that 235 by 235 spring steel sheet. It's got a nice textured PEI on there. And I think it's got about a 220 by 220 build area. In terms of print volume, it's pretty much exactly the same as your old Ender 3s. And they've completely done away with any V-groove wheels. So instead of those old plastic wheels that could sometimes wear out on your Ender 3s, this is using an all-metal construction, pretty similar to the Prusa i3 Mark IV with these thick linear Z-axes. And then it seems they've taken a page out of Bamboo Lab's book by using this type of uh, linear guide. They're basically steel rods that are press fit into an aluminum extrusion. And you can see those being used for the X and the Y axes. That all metal construction should stiffen this machine up quite a bit and allow you to handle higher print speeds and accelerations. The benefit over traditional linear rails or linear rods is that this kind of setup is quite a bit cheaper. So they're able to save some cost there. And yeah, that's the main reason why you're gonna buy this machine over a lot of the alternatives. It's gonna be the cost. Also taking another page out of the Bamboo Lab design library, they're using a very similar camera setup. They've got a dual camera slash um, light setup. Similarly, you've got a camera and light over here on the side of this machine as well. Now, I couldn't get my webcam to work. I don't know what the issue was. I guess you have to initialize it in Clipper using some crow's nest software, something or other. And uh, yeah, I couldn't get it working. When I first started printing with this machine, I was just getting failed print after failed print. So you can see here, this one, uh, the bed leveling wasn't working correctly. It turns out the reason I was having this issue was because I was using a random printer profile and just throwing it on here and you know, I just picked basically something that was Ender 3 shaped, sliced my files, and then tried to run it on this machine, but it wouldn't import the bed mesh because for some reason, the way that Clipper is set up, it requires a couple specific lines of G-code to use the bed leveling mesh. Otherwise it just ignores it and you get really bad first layer quality. So it was causing some problems until I followed their instructions and loaded the Orca Slicer profile for the SV06 Ace onto my computer. I sliced some stuff and I started getting some really nice prints. In between these nice prints, I also had a bunch of these failed prints, which I guess demonstrate how good the first layer quality is. You can see on all of these, the first layer quality is super nice. These are like paper sheets of plastic, but whenever it would go to the second layer, it would freeze and it'd give me a fan exception error. And I think the reason I was getting that error was because these fans have a tachometer pin uh, or a tachometer pin. It basically tells the printer how fast the fan is spinning. And in the event that you get something jammed in those fans and you know it's not able to blow air correctly, it throws an error and it stops the print. I think I was getting some false positives on that system. So there's some parameters in the Clipper config profile that need to be tuned. I just disabled them for the remainder of my tests because I didn't feel like going in and tuning those myself. Probably won't be an issue on the production machines, but uh, yeah, take that for what it's worth. This thing was super easy to put together. It basically came in the top half and the bottom half and you just put four bolts in to get the whole thing assembled and then slap the screen on the side and you're pretty much ready to go. All of that added up took maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I like the attention to detail in terms of making it as inexpensive as possible to manufacture. This is a really inexpensive to build design because they're using injection molded parts and really simple components all around. For some reason, I haven't been able to catch it on camera, but every once in a while when I turn this machine on, it makes some kind of screeching noise coming from this box. I guess something's getting caught in the fan. I'm guessing maybe this little wire here 
might have been getting stuck in the fan. In terms of the main board and electronics, that's one area where I feel like this is a really strong performer. It's super simple in here, just one control board, really easy to access all the components there. And you've got a little small MCU over here. It's just powered by this one USB port and that plugs everything on the hot end. So this is a nice modern setup. And if you wanted to modify anything on the tool head here, that would be really easy to do because you have easy access to all these plugs. It's just this little magnetic cover, you pop it off. And let's say you want to replace the fan duct or you want to install some kind of massive hot end onto this machine. All of that would be really easy to do on a machine like this. Definitely scores some bonus points in terms of modability, which I feel like a lot of manufacturers aren't prioritizing anymore. When this machine launches, they'll have all the files open sourced. Anyone can download the CAD files, the Clipper files, and basically turn this into whatever machine you want. So in terms of kit printers, I did a video a little while back on how I didn't really like the kit printer experience where you build a printer from scratch. Well, this has a lot of advantages of a kit printer where it's moddable and open source, but you're also saving a lot of time and money by starting with a base platform like this. So this could be a pretty good option for you if you're into the modding. Some other mechanical notes on this machine. They have custom extrusions for the X axis and the Y axis and uh, they're using standard aluminum extrusions for the rest of the frame. So it's a good combination of custom components that help simplify the construction and stock components that will allow it to be modular and you can attach all sorts of stuff to the sides of this machine. I do like what they're doing here, but usability I think could use some work. Between Wi-Fi issues, not being able to get the camera running, issues with the bed leveling, getting my models sliced, having the fan trigger timeouts that like cause the printer to stop. I have had a lot of little issues with this and I hope that most of those issues are sorted out by the time they start shipping these to customers. Because I do think it offers a lot of value to someone who wants to do modding like in the old days of the under three. That's kind of a complaint I have with the way the industry is going. I mean, behind me I've got this crazy machine, the uh, Creality K2 Plus. I think Creality should be open sourcing all of the stuff on this K2, but a lot of the other companies like Bamboo Lab here, this guy, not really friendly to open source. I guess, yeah, I should talk about this. This is one of the most important aspects of a machine, is how nice the prints look. And I will say that the prints that come off of this machine are extremely nice. You've got adequate part cooling. You've got enough meltiness in the hot end. You know, it's a nice machine, but for the MSRP of $300, that's pretty steep. You can get a Creality Under 3 V3 SE for under 200. I feel like what Soval is doing is they're kind of picking up where Creality left off. Now Creality is working on crazy machines like this that are like trying to be the new Bamboo Lab. But meanwhile, Soval is taking over the old niche of Creality, which was really catering to people who liked modding their printers and having a really simple printer that you could like understand and figure out how to repair yourself. This machine is going to be launching at a reduced price. I think it's going to be like 250 something dollars, which is a pretty good deal. Uh, MSRP is 300, which obviously isn't as good of a deal. But if you want just a basic bed slinger that's going to get good print quality for you, it might have a little bit of uh, issues getting it set up, then this could be a machine that you could want. For me, I kind of am becoming more and more of a fan of the It Just Works printers. You know, this kind of stuff from uh, this manufacturer or this manufacturer or uh, even this manufacturer now. We've got a lot of good options on the market, but where I think this is really standing out is in the modability and the open sourceness. They should also be coming out with a plus version of this machine. So basically the same build quality, the same print quality, but in a larger package. I think that could appeal to a lot of people as well. Am I going to use this printer often? Uh, honestly, I don't think I will because I've got one of these. Now, keep in mind, this, uh, this Prusa machine is about three to four times more expensive than this Soval machine. It's got a lot better build quality and worked a lot better out of the box than the Soval machine did. But, you know, if you're a cheapskate and you like cheap printers and you like open source stuff that you can modify and make your own, then this could be a good option for you. 
Now, before we completely sign off on this video, I'm gonna rapid fire some last minute things that I really like and that I really dislike about this machine. So um, in terms of what I dislike, I will say the cable management for this, uh, oh yeah, that's, that's bad. Um, we've just got this exposed ribbon cable over here and when I poke it, it's screwing up the, uh, the signal to the touch screen here. So if I push this to the side and bend it a little bit, it gets a little funky when I let go, it's fine. So yeah, I really think they need to come up with some way to protect this little ribbon cable here. Here's the little ribbon cable. If they could have like a 3D printed cover that completely covers this up, and preferably you'd want this to be shielded so that you don't have stray uh, noise from other electronics interfering with the signal to the screen. I think that would be really nice. I mean, everything else on this machine's pretty solidly built. It's just this touch screen wiring really needs help. And I hope that they improve that or provide some kind of cover you can print out and just completely cover that up because I don't like that at all. The uh, filament runout detection sensor being up here, not a big fan of that. I mean, it works fine, but once you get up to the very top of the print volume, this thing's gonna be like working overtime to swivel back and forth. And also this is just kind of a cheap sensor and this cable might get pulled on or worn out or something. It would be much better if they incorporated the filament runout detection sensor onto the print head itself. I think that would be a whole lot better. And also, uh, this machine is pretty loud when all the fans are turned on. I think it was like 65-ish decibels, so not my first choice for a machine I would be running in a shared space that I'm also working in. The offline workflow on this machine is pretty good. You've got two USB Type-A ports up top here. I assume you could plug in additional peripherals or maybe a different wireless camera if you wanted to get another angle of what's going on on the machine. Or maybe you could plug in a mouse and keyboard if you're feeling really crazy and flash your own version of Clipper and you could play, uh, you could use this as your personal computer or something like that. But when it comes to actually printing, you have local storage on the machine. And you also have USB storage. So you can print directly off of those USB drives. However, when you print off of the USB drive here, it, uh, it doesn't copy the file onto the main storage. So if you're printing off the USB drive and unplug that, then it could interrupt the printing process compared to what you have on the Creality machines. The first step that it does when you tell it to print off of the USB drive is it copies the file onto the local storage. Also, I wish I could have this machine forget the wireless network that was causing issues on it, but it kept wanting to log into it even when I really wish it would have just forgotten about that wireless network because it was causing issues. However, since I hooked this up to my home Wi-Fi network, it completely forgot about the old wireless network and now it's working fine offline. So you've got a decent offline workflow with this machine. It's open source, moddable. Uh, looks like it should be pretty easy to maintain in the long run. I'm probably not gonna use this because I have some fantastic machines all around me, but if I only had a budget of 250 or $300, then I might consider something like this. So with all that in mind, would you wanna get an SV06? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, let me know if you think I'm being too much of a shill in this video, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Also, I have an affiliate link if you wanna buy one of these fine machines, one of these fabulous Soval machines that are, uh, you know, they're okay. All right, see you in the next video.